Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle with you, Jim Blaney, we're on in the sidelines, and let's take a look at our resource bank keys to the game, Tommy. Well, I think it's quite simple. You have to get the ball to Garrett Wolf early and often. You give it to him 30 plus times, he's going to get you at least 150 yards, and that's going to equate to a Husky victory. Slow down McCray. You got to keep that Ohio running attack on the sideline. Don't let them dictate the pace of the game and finally the always creative win the turnover battle take care of the football that's akin to scoring more points than your opponent I figured we'd get the bad football cliches underway from the get-go all right series history Huskies lead at 9-7 they haven't met in three years last one we were here it was a real good football game that went to overtime it's time for the NIU MBA program opening kickoff. Deep will be 31, Josh Abrams. 28, pardon me, 82, Scott Mayo will be deep. Chris Nendick. We're ready to kick for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Good crowd on hand, beautiful day for football, and the sea of red rises as one, and we are getting the home portion of the schedule underway. Ball in the air, and the clock starts moving. It's bounced around, and Ohio downs it. And they will start. First to 10 at their own 20. And Tommy, we do have a couple of rule changes we want to let everyone know about. Some of the coaches not happy with the rules, but the clock now starts as soon as the ball's touched on a kickoff. And after a first down, as soon as the ball's spotted ready for play, it goes. Yeah, I, I think that all in college football wanted to make sure they're not playing three and a half, four hour games. And I think that's the reason why the rules were put in place. It's the Applebee's starting lineup. You look at the Ohio backs and receivers, and there is their stud tailback, Calvin McCray, Austin Everson. We'll start at quarterback, although Ohio will run a couple of different looks at you from the quarterback spot. We've got markers already flying. Brad Bauer, who is a transfer from Illinois. This is a homecoming for him. He went to Hinsdale and is from Burr Ridge, Illinois. He also will see time at quarterback. We have a false start penalty on Ohio. So they will start first and 15. And you just got to look at their offensive line. It's an experienced group with three returning starters. Two seniors, three juniors. And uh, unfortunately for Ohio, you can't afford these mistakes early in a ball game against a team as talented as Northern. And a single back set with Calvin McCray. They did it again. And I believe another false start's going to be called here on Ohio. The crowd loves it. You see the defense led by Dead a very ball. emotional and fiery Ken Ball's West. Start. We were down on the field the early. Offense. Ken West Five is forming at the mouth of this one, number 34, who will start at defensive end. He's at left end, 6'1", 243, a senior, and one of those real emotional leaders. You see him right there. But for Ohio, when you're a balanced football team on offense and you rely on the running game to get things started, the last thing you want to face is a first and 20. Now they'll go out of the shotgun on a first and 20. And they will give it to McCray, and McCray will go relatively nowhere, knocked down a gain of two yards. It'll bring up a second and 18. Let's take a look at the Applebee's NIU Huskies defensive starters. There is Kenny West, Brad Benson, Crutch, and English. Laylark, McCarthy, and Corey Hansen getting a start this week. He did not start at Ohio State. Then you see the Hands Bros, Ryder, and Utchin. Good, solid defensive group. Again out of the gun, this time an empty backfield for Ohio. Everson barking out signals. He will go to the air, and he will miss Mayo. On a short toss, and it will bring up a third and 18 for Ohio. This is just not a comfortable situation for the Ohio offense. As I said earlier, 
Their run first, throw second. They've got a veteran quarterback in Austin Everson, but he's not the type to drop back and air it out. When you see an empty backfield and five wide receivers out there for the Bobcat offense, you know things aren't going the way they had planned. Now, one of the keys that you and I talked about is Northern being able to put pressure on the quarterback. I would expect they will try and tee off right here. You would think so. It's an attack 4-3. They've always called it. They didn't sack a lot of quarterbacks last season, and quarterback pressure is something Joe Novak wanted to improve on this year. Everson goes down the field and misses his man. Fires incomplete looking for his receiver, Cheeto Naakocha. I think work. I got that right. Good work. Listen, there are not a whole lot of plays designed for third and 18 that you're going to convert on a high percentage. Cheeto Naakocha was the intended receiver so this drive nets them minus eight yards and they will punt the football away into the net lasher marcus perez is the deep man the punt is away it's a fairly short kick though into the wind it will bounce around the huskies will let it roll and they will go on the attack first and ten at the 45 yard line or thereabouts The NIU offense comes on the field. You look at their offensive starters brought to you by Applebee's. Garrett Wolf, Britt Davis, Jake Nordeen, Jarrett Carter, and Matt Simon. A 45-yard punt. It's first you see their offensive line anchored by one of the best in the country, Doug Free, who many say is a lock to be a number one NFL draft pick. Phil Horvath, number three. Senior quarterback with his single back set, one of the best in the country, Garrett Wolf. And Horvath throws and finds his man. Matt Simon makes his next the catch, a gain of 17 yards and a Husky first down. Just a little seam route for Matt Simon. Horvath finds it in between three Ohio defenders. A great throw. Maybe caught the Ohio defense a little by surprise I know everyone on that Ohio D is focusing on number one they come out throwing it and they're going to throw it again and this time it's incomplete they were looking for Marcus Perez number five a 5'11 170 pound sophomore let's take a look at the Ohio defense brought to you by Applebee's the Ohio defensive starters Jamison Hartke Shane Yates Landon Cohen and Brett Sykes up front Graham Muncy Russ are the backers and there is their defensive backfield very experienced group on defense nine starters returning three of them in the secondary and Garrett Wolf will touch it his first carry of the day turns the corner Garrett Wolf into the secondary knocked out that will be a gain of eight yards and bring up a third and two. Tommy, that got pretty good push on that line. Well, get used to seeing this play. Just a stretch play. He gets his big offensive lineman out in front of him, gets a block from Britt Davis. They like to keep Garrett Wolf on the perimeter where he has not only great speed, but he's got great vision. They stretch that play out and allow him to find a seam. Acevedo with a real good block there. Very athletic on that offensive line. They can afford to pull their, their guards, their, their tackle, and their center at times. And this time they hand it to Garrett Wolf, and it goes absolutely nowhere. A loss of two on the play. And it will bring down a fourth and four situation. It's too much penetration up front. Great play there by Shane Yates, shaking his block. 6'2", 280, a senior, number 74, just blew that play up. So the Huskies will try a field goal. They've got the wind with them. A 47-yard attempt for Chris Nendick. Junior kicker, very solid. Snap, set, kick is no good. Wide right. May have had a little problem on the snap and the set. But Nendick misses. We'll take a timeout. We've got no score in DeKalb. Rest written consent of Comcast Sports that and NIU is strictly prohibited. Send Tom Waddle over to your house to carry. Austin Everson throws on first down. And he has his big tight end. I believe that was Rudy Sylvan that made the catch. A gain of two, bringing up a second and eight. 
Well, when Ohio does throw the football, look for a lot of high percentage passes. Nothing fancy here. Frank Solich wants to grind it out, use that clock, and maybe get himself some 12, 13, 14 play drives put together. Again, Ohio goes out of the shotgun, single back set. They'll give to Calvin McCray. Nope, they'll fake, and Everson will keep it. Quarterback keeper for Everson. He gains seven, and they'll call it a third and one situation. Good decision by a veteran quarterback. Little option route. He decides to keep it here. Real nice fake to McCray. You saw the whole NIU defensive line bite on it. Absolutely, and they. They want to establish the run last week against Tennessee Martin, a Division I AA opponent. They only rushed the ball for 62 yards. This time they'll give it to McCray, and he's going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Tim McCarthy, no gain on the play. Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker, a sophomore, six foot, 235, and Tommy, he blew it up. It just comes in, unblocks. Tim McCarthy stuffs that one at the line of scrimmage. And again, the last thing Ohio wanted to do was three and out. Tim McCarthy, just a great, great football player. Nothing flashy about him. Matt Lasher in the punt. He was the special teams player of the week in the conference last week for his performance. And here is a high drifting kick. It'll be caught, fair caught, and Northern will take it. A 34-yard punt for Ohio. Let's take a look at the weather conditions here today in DeKalb. A little hazy, 72 degrees. You see the winds, 12 to 17 miles per hour. There is a chance of some rain here today. It's not going to come into about 4 or 4.30. Thank you there. You're welcome. Tom Skilling, famous weatherman. Are you, were you comfortable playing in these conditions? Did you like it cooler, warmer, what would you play? As long as it wasn't raining and it wasn't 15 below, I was okay with it. You didn't like those chilly climates. No, I don't think anybody does. Horvath hands to Garrett Wolf. Wolf cracks. His way through, I believe he's picked up a first down. Yes, a gain of 11, and the change will move. This play designed again to maybe bounce outside, but he sees a great seam, gets a block in front by Matt Rogers. And Garrett Wolf does such a great job, despite his diminutive size, about 5'7", 177 pounds, does a great job banging it between the tackles. He just never keeps stop moving his feet. Surprisingly, this this young man can can carry it 35, 40 times a game and, and remain healthy week in and week His out. His legs are always churning. First and ten at the 37. They give to Wolf again, and he is smacked after a gain of one yard. Well, right now, Ohio's having some success despite that last play. Stopping them up the middle, you have a new center in Eddie Adamski and Chris Acevedo at your left guard. You see a great play. By Tyler Russ, the weak side linebacker, steps in and makes the stop. You lose a quality center like Brian Van Acker to graduation. You're going to have to learn your way in the middle of that offensive line. Tyler Russ, as you said, the man that came up and put the big hit on Wolf. This time Horvath's going to throw. He's got time. He's flushed. He's looking. He throws. Has his man. And he's got a first down and more. First down, Northern Illinois. Marcus Perez makes the catch. A gain of 22. You see right there the reason why Phil Horvath was the most efficient quarterback in Division I college football last season prior to hurting himself. Doesn't make a mistake. Doesn't throw the ball into traffic. Waits to find somebody open. And again, you get a great block. Matt Rogers, a veteran guard, steps up and cleans a pile. Horvath does a nice job finding Marcus Perez, who had snuck into the flat. And they'll give it to Garrett Wolf. Wolf trying to pick his way, and he will be turned back at the 35 after a gain of five yards. Tony Ward, number six, 5'11, 198 pound junior, came up and turned it back at the 35. As you look at his numbers last week versus number one Ohio State. And the big number there, 6.6 .6 yards per rush. Against the best team in America. And if you can believe it, his time with the Northern Illinois Huskies, he has averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry, which is unbelievable over the course of a career. That's amazing. Horvath fakes to Wolf. He throws. He's got his big man. No doubt of bounds. Brandon 
Ben Davis, 6'4", 261, a junior. When they go to a double tight end set, he is always in there. Gain of 14 yards for Horvath. Well, these types of routes are going to be open when you run the football effectively. Brandon Davis just slips underneath the coverage. A good play fake. You see the offensive line sells the run. Phil Horvath once again very accurate with his throw. Joe Novak told us that they had a very good week of practice. They give it to Gary Brown. He bounces it outside. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. 21 yards to Painter, and the Huskies jump on top. 6 nothing, Tommy, that was a big time run. Well, you just saw why he is a legitimate Heisman candidate, as we talked about in the open. He's got great vision. He finds a hole once again, his offensive line out in front of him, giving him some creases. And right there, he just turns on the speed, 4.3 and a 40-yard dash. The kid has got tremendous talent. Chris Nendick has made 94 straight, make it 95 straight PADs. And it's a 7-0 lead for the Huskies, 6.35 to go. First quarter, Garrett Wolf, 38 rushing yards on that drive alone. And the Huskies have a 7-0 lead. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back for the kickoff. Husky 7, Bobcats nothing on Comcast Sports Net. Thank you, Jim. Nendick's kick, end over end. About six yards deep in the end zone, and Ohio will take it first and 10 at their own 20. Good to see Jim recognize that I was a crushing blocker in my time. He must be confusing you with Dennis McKinnon. <laughs> he must be. <laughs> Silky dig and flat knock some people out. You see Frank Solich right there. Can't be happy with the way his offense has played to this point. Frank was the longtime coach at Nebraska, second season as the Bobcats head coach. As I said in the open, too, I mean, listen, they're not going to try to out-scheme you. Frank Solich is going to come out and try to punch you right in the mouth, run the football, and play good defense. And right now, not real sure what the Bobcats are doing, spreading things out. Frank was a fabulous player in his career. He and Joe Novak have history having played against one another in Ohio prep football and then Frank get this 145 pound all American at fullback at Nebraska that's a tough man there that is a tough man gain a six on that play it'll be a second and four for Ohio Calvin McCray is the deep man single back set Fake to McCray, they'll throw the football. Ohio's gonna have a first down, their first first down of the afternoon. As Rudy Sylvan catches his second ball for a gain of 11. Austin Everson hit him, and he just did the rest with his feet to get the first down. Once again, you see the benefit of running the football effectively, and a nice play fake to Calvin McCray. Austin Everson gets it out to his big target, and they move the chains. First and 10 at the 37. Again out of the shotgun. Looks to be a bit of a broken play and it goes absolutely nowhere. That one did not work the way they drew it up. No gain on the play. What happened, Tom? Uh, it didn't look like the offensive line knew the snap count. No gain on the play for Ohio. It looked like and Calvin McCray may, the quarterback may have thought McCray was supposed to take a handoff. McCray said no. Yeah, and Austin Everson did the right thing. Protected the football. Got down as quick as possible. Yeah, you just don't want to take a big hit right. there and pop the football. Second and 10 at the 37. Empty backfield. Everson looking, looking, throwing, going down the field. Got his man. That one's gonna go to the house for the Bobcats. Touchdown, William Norwood, 63 yards. Free safety, Dustin Uchik is going to absolutely be sick to his stomach tomorrow when he sees this in the film room. He just takes a horrible angle. It was a good decision, it was a bit of a floater. Norwood finds a seaman right there. Just a bad angle by Uchik. Good decision looking up, but look at that. That is a quail. 
Good job by Norwood to find the ball, get it into the end zone. Extra point is up, and it is perfect for Matt Lasher, and we are even at seven on a 63-yard touchdown. I just think that, that Utschick thought that he was going to be able to step up and pick this pass off, and the ball hangs. Just a, a bad decision by the free safety. Much like golf, there are no pictures on scorecards. No one's going to look at this tomorrow and say, what a horrible throw. It obviously found its target, but Dustin Utchick saw interception he all did. the way, and, and the ball just hung in the air a little longer than I thought. He, I think he thought it would, and it works out. William Norwood takes it and does it with his legs after the catch. Outruns the NIU defense for the touchdown. Norwood is a senior, 6'1", 215. He's from close to this area, Racine, Wisconsin. I think the, the Northern defense came in today and said, hey, listen, we're going to focus on shutting down this Bobcat running attack. And if they beat us through the air, then they beat us through the air. Unfortunately for Joe no Novak, they just beat him through the air right there. Exactly right. You know that Ohio had 28 yards before that play. They get 63 on one pass. They had 144 total yards last week against Tennessee Martin. They get the big play, and this one's going to come down to Marcus Perez. Marcus Perez finds a seam. Marcus Perez across the 30. Marcus Perez tripped up by the kicker, Lasher, with an outstanding tackle. Otherwise, that one may be gone for six. 41 yards on the return, but great, great play by the kicker, Matt Lasher. To the field we go to Jim Blaney. All right, David, thank you very much. You talk about a big difference down here on the field. Up until that touchdown by Ohio, their bench, they were starting to feel like, oh, no, here goes Northern Illinois. But all of a sudden, they get that touchdown, and the demeanor of this bench totally changed. Guys coming off the field saying, hey, we're right there with these guys, and we're right in this. Back to you. All right, Jimmy, back to action. Horvath goes to the air, finds his big tight end, and it'll be a gain of eight, bringing up a second and two as Jake Nordine makes the catch. I think Marcus Perez would be wise to sit next to Dustin Utchik tomorrow in films. Dustin's going to be sick at the angle he took, and Marcus is going to get razzed for being brought, brought down by the kicker. You don't ever let a kicker take you down an open field. Real good tackle. He's a kicker. I was a kicker. We, we kickers can hit. Hand up, Garrett Wall. Nothing like breaking the spirit of a team that just scored. Once again, they bring it right up the gut. Guard to guard. Northern is having a great afternoon blocking it. Garrett Wolf to the open field. No one's going to catch him. Well, Todd Koenig thought he had him, and all of a sudden his shoes went one way, his body went the other. Right. Garrett Wolf was gone. Garrett doesn't look like he's moving real fast at times, but he does have that extra gear when he needs it. Nendick's extra point is good, and it's back to a seven-point lead. 14-7 Huskies. We've just seen three TDs in 328, and you're watching the best back in America. He's just hit pay dirt twice. We'll come right back. Got a doozy going at Comcast Sportsnet. 14-7 Northern Illinois over Ohio. A lot of fireworks. 307 still to go in the first. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle, and Jim Blaney with you in DeKalb. There's some pretty good company right there, Tom. I would say so. I think he's going to move up that list fairly quickly. Well, he's about to go by Alan Ross. Well, and it won't take long for him to get past Mark Keller either. Can he catch Michael Turner remains to be seen. I think that Garrett's probably got a 17, 1800-yard season in it. Yeah, I think so. Then he probably gets seven carries, 90 yards already. Unbelievable. Another deep kick, and this one again will be down in the end zone. So Ohio will take over first and 10 at their own 20. The NIU Alumni Association scoring summary of that drive. Two plays, 54 yards, took a minute 14. Wolf did the honors again. Two cut his last two carries for touchdowns, and there you saw the big run. Don't blink. You may miss it. That's exactly right. 
It's another ho hum touchdown for one of the best backs in college football. Wow. And remember, we were here years ago when he wasn't even a starter. No. And he got into the game He's playing, playing behind, injury. Playing behind A.J. Harris, correct? Correct. First to ten, nearly a bad snap, corralled by Emerson. And a gain of five for Ohio. Josh Abrams was the man who carried the football, but a real nice job by Austin Everson to haul in a high snap. He may have the best hands on the team so far today. Second down five from the 25. You see Dustin Hutchick there. Made Anywhere a mistake he stay in the, away from one of his position well, he, coaches. He, he made a mistake in the last drive, but this young man's a, a talented football player. Led the back and tackles last year. There's a handoff. Calvin McCray picking his way. Calvin McCray will gain. They're going to call it four, maybe five. Expect a lot of this as Calvin comes off and needs to. Get the shoe put back on. But expect a lot of misdirection running of the football today from Ohio. They want to control the clock, and obviously, as you saw a few plays ago, they want to keep number one in the red uniform off the field. Third and one. Crowd into it. Quarterback sneak. And I think he gains two yards, and they will. Call it a first down. Well, when you're all a pretty good push, your all conference running back leaves with a bad shoe. You have to think that the next guy up to get the ball is going to be your quarterback. They get a good push up front. And Ohio converts the third down. Now, here's where we see the rule change this year because the ball's been spot. It's been spotted ready for play, so the clock rolls. Normally, last year, the rule was not until it snapped did you run the time again. And you will see a quarterback change right now for Ohio. The youngster for Burr Ridge, That's Brad Bauer, Brad is Bauer center is now in. They will use different looks at quarterback. And we have a stoppage in play. There is no yellow laundry. We get a timeout for Ohio. Well, this is going to be a problem for teams this year. As you see, Austin Everson looks like he needs to run into the, uh, the locker room. But they told us before the game that we would see Bauer today. Yes. But the point I was making is I think you're going to see some of this confusion in terms of managing the clock, the clock correctly with some of the time changes that are, have come up about with the rule changes. I think you are going to see some confu confusion at times, and I think you're going to see some delay of games that didn't exist last year. You will see, they say, as many as 20 fewer plays in a college football game this year. So and hence, I think what you're going to see from a lot of high-powered offenses over the course of the year is a lot of no-huddle offense so that they can replace those missed plays just by not going into the huddle more, more frequently. And as Steve Spurrier said, he believes you'll see more underdogs it's shocking people because the explosive offenses, as you say, won't get as many opportunities to put people away. Tomorrow, get a complete recap of the Bears Packers showdown on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. Pat Boyle, Richard Dent, Jerry Azuma, and Dad Jiggets will break down all the action. William Jackson will bring you interviews with all the players as they leave the locker room. U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live tomorrow, immediately after the Bears game, only right here. On Comcast Sports, poor Next. Brett Favre. I think he may be running for his life tomorrow. And I say that poor Brett Favre is a former Bear because I have tremendous respect for him. But they're starting two rookie guards on the offensive line. I think Brett may have a long day against that Bear defense. We're being told Austin Everson is. Ohio tries a fake double reverse. They go reverse. It goes absolutely nowhere. Husky defense not fooled at all. And when you're not a high-powered offense, you cannot afford many negative plays, and this is a negative play. Loss of five on the play. Brandon Bice, redshirt freshman, 6'3", 236, blew it up, did a real nice job. Looked like a real good fake on the double reverse, and then nobody on the Husky side bit on it. Well, as you said earlier, Joe Novak talked to us before the game, said they had a great week of practice. A lot of that is film, uh, film study. Looks like they had that play smothered from the beginning. Bauer throws, he completes it, finds his man, and a big, big hit for Mark Ryder, number 
number eight absolutely lit up Justin Fitzgerald. Watch this hit again. It's a nice little swing route. This will clear your cobwebs if you have oh. both guys. Get a nice audio version. Oh. oh. Wow. The quarter has come to an end. It'll bring up a third and seven when we come back. I'm going to go lay down because that just brought back some really bad memories. <laughs> Tampa Bay, maybe? To we'll name a few. 14 7 Huskies over Bobcats on Comcast Sports Day. While you were away, Northern Illinois called for a defensive pass interference. I believe, who are they going to get? Mark Ryder on that penalty? He was a little extra jazzed. Defensive pass interference. Spot foul, automatic first down. A little overzealous after the, the big hit last time. Correct. He hit Cheeto Noah Kocha. That's the first penalty on Northern Illinois. You know, as Coach Ditka used to tell us, son, some days you're the bug, other days you're the windshield. Is that what he said? Sure. I just unfortunately spent way too much of my career as the bug. Bauer still in at quarterback. In relief of Austin Everson. And a big hit laid on number five, Calvin McRae, by Mark Ryder again. He's been all over the place. There's a look at first quarter stats. Yeah, again, the big play, the touchdown pass to William Norwood for Ohio, and it's all Garrett Wolf for Northern Illinois. Time of possession, a little misleading. Already 150 yards from the Husky offense. Gain of three on that play, second and seven. Brad Bauer out of Burr Ridge, Illinois. Transfer from the University of Illinois. And Bauer to the air, incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end, Rudy Silvan. Just didn't set his feet. And that's going to happen to a quarterback that steps in after sitting on the sideline for the first quarter. You, you want to know some interesting symmetry between these two schools? I'd love to. Dan Castellaneta, the voice of Homer Simpson, is a Northern Illinois graduate. I did not know that. Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson, is an Ohio graduate. You are the king of pop culture. That's me, buddy. Third down and seven for Ohio. Bauer to the air, looking, dumps it off to McCray. And McCray will be, see where they spot him. Did he get the first down as he knocked out of bounds? And he's going to be short. Well, they're going to spot him out of bounds about the 42-yard line. Let's go down to Jim Blaney on the sideline. Jim. All right, David, on Austin Everson, went into the locker room for just a moment and came right back out when he came out of the game. He hasn't been getting looked at by the trainers. He has his helmet, so he's just on the sidelines right now, ready to go if they need him. But on the other hand, Chino Wachoka, he came off the sidelines, and let's just put it this way, lunch made a reappearance, so he's going to be on the sidelines for a couple of minutes, but it looks like he may be able to go back in. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Thanks lunch, for that visual. Lunch yeah, made a reappearance. That. Thanks a lot. Marcus Perez will feel last year's punt. Perez evades one man. Perez turns the corner and then is swarmed under by a sea of green and white. Just delaying the inevitable oh, right there. Another great punt. 48 yards and a return of seven. You look at Joe Novak. Certainly got to be happy with the way his offense is moving the football. Let me give you some numbers on Joe Novak. His 11th season as the Huskies head coach, and you see 54 and 61. Don't forget there was a lengthy 23-game losing streak to start. Since that time, in 10 seasons since, 32 and 23 at home. They've won 31 of their last 37 here in DeKalb. 15 and 2 at home since the beginning of the 03 season for an 88% winning percentage. Gain of four, by the way, on that play. Second and six. There are both QBs sharing an air sickness bag and taking phone calls. Tyler Russ, you just saw a, a moment ago, do something not many defenders in college football have been able to do, and that's bring Garrett Wolf down all by himself. Huskies have not lost more than one Mac home game in any of the last seven seasons. Talk about building a program Joe Novak has done just that. Horvath throws, finds his man. 
Jared Carter makes the catch. It's a gain of five. It'll bring up a third and one. Jared Carter, the receiver. Let's take a look at some more Joe Novak numbers. Eight and 36 to get it rolling. He took over a program that was completely buried. Since then, 37 and 20, Mac coach of the year, won a bowl game, Mac title game in 05, and picked to win it this year. And the one thing missing from that resume, which I know Joe is hot after, a Mac title. They are picked to win it this year, and Garrett Wolf will. That'll bring up a fourth down, a loss of one on the play. Just a jailbreak up front, a full blitz. That's a big time hit by Michael Mitchell. Coming up from the strong safety position. You know, they fired up. They've had tremendous success attacking the middle of that Ohio defense at times and at other times. That inexperienced guard to guard tandem of the Huskies offensive line, they've struggled. It's been inconsistent play. Andy he did better in the punt. Punt is away. It'll be a long driving kick. And a fair catch right around the 30-yard line. That will be a 45-yard kick into the win. Real good punt for Dittbetter. We'll take a timeout, 14-7 Huskies. Athletic performance center. And they broke ground. You see it right there. It's going to be an absolutely phenomenal facility. Athletic director and vice president at the University, Jim Phillips, has done just an unbelievable job in his two years here at breaking ground there and coming up with some amazing, and then a football loose! Stripped from behind from McCray by Kenny West in Northern Illinois, comes up with it, Corey Hansen fell on it, and the Huskies take over in excellent field position. Just a beautifully designed play as well. Austin Everson sells the pass, drops back the little shovel pass to Calvin McCray, who finds the seam and then just doesn't take care of the football. Ken West, nice job stripping it. But again, you can't go on the road against a team with, I think we would all say with some superior talent, turn the football over. Certainly not in your end of the football field. Phil Horvath with a single back set gives it to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf turns the corner and he is smacked. Right around the 42 or 43 yard line. A little extracurricular activities. Well, you see the strength of Garrett Wolf right there. That was a tremendous hit by Michael Mitchell, but ultimately it was Mitchell who landed on his back. Watch number one, he's five foot seven. He turns the corner right there, and then he gets Bang. hit there. But look at the leg strength. And look at the, you know, when they talk about core strength in your hips and in your midsection, Garrett Wolf has it. Garrett Wolf has it, despite being five seven and 180 pounds. You see Michael Mitchell, 6'1", 207 or thereabouts. And I'm not so sure that Mitchell didn't take the brunt of it at the end. Gain of four, second and six. Horvath's gonna throw, Horvath's going down the field, has got a man, and he dropped it. Marcus Perez had himself six, and he just couldn't tuck it away. A perfect throw from Phil Horvath, right in his hands, and it just wasn't to be. Again, Horvath does a great job showing patience, steps up in the pocket, and just throws it right on the money. And as you saw at the very end, Marcus Perez looks like he takes his eyes off the ball. There is a bit of wind, but that certainly is not an excuse. He knows it, should have had it. A third and five now. Horvath to the air again, steps up. Gets a little pressure, rolls, throws, and he's got his man. He's got his man, Jake Nordine. Makes the grab for a Husky first down and a gain of 19. Pretty athletic play by a big tight end, but again, I've talked about it a lot today. Horvath, a veteran quarterback, not making mistakes and throws it. Perfect strike. Nordine does a great job catching the football, getting a foot down, and converting a big third down. Says Marcus, I'll pick you up, buddy. Did you ever have one of those where you hit six and it just slipped through your fingers? Happens to everybody. 
Horvath to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf trying to turn the corner, picking his way. Boy, he's just hard to break down. He is. He's slippery. He's got great vision. He's Gave got it. two on that. Great one, strength. Huh? And again, they're trying to attack the perimeter of that Ohio defense. Not a whole lot there. Does he remind you of anybody in the NFL? Boy, Dave that's tough. Maybe Dave Maggot size wise. I, I think is Gentry, I, tell you, bear. I tell you Garrett Wolf's about as strong for his size Seven as anyone I've ever seen put pads on. See Garrett Wolf the single back set. Fake to Wolf. Horvath rolling. Horvath looking. He's going to run out of bounds. Senior move. Good solid play by the Ohio defense. And a great decision by Horvath. You're in plus territory, a place you need to come away with points, whether it's a, tie, a touchdown or a field goal. Nordine's not open. Horvath just does the wise thing. Garrett Wolf, the leading returning rusher in the nation, averaged 175.6 a year ago, 200.2 all-purpose yards per game, and named to the very prestigious Playboy All-American team. First Husky to ever get that honor. And Horvath was belted down. I think he took a shot. He had Britt Davis running all by himself up the numbers. That one was intended for Jared if you Carter. See, you see Britt Davis come a little wheel route. Nobody around him, but obviously Phil Horvath had somebody in his face. Sure, he'll go back to Phil and say, hey, well, why don't we try that play one more time and see if we can get a different result. Chris Nendick from 36 yards. Snap, set, kick, sails to the uprights, and it is perfect. Points off the turnover, and the Huskies grab a 17-7 lead. And Nick the junior, one of the better kickers you'll see. Joe Novak probably not real excited about the field goal now. You had an opportunity with Marcus Perez for the touchdown. You had. You had another opportunity with Britt Davis running all by himself down the sideline. Obviously, you want the points, but when you get the chance to get the ball in the end zone and get six, you have to come away with the touchdowns. Here's a look at the Ohio Bobcats sideline. Their head coach, Frank Solich, as we said earlier in the game, an All-American fullback at 145. That's how the game has changed because you'd never get a chance now to play it that you way. I don't think there's probably, maybe there's a few kickers. I don't believe, though, any positional players on any Division I roster are wearing a, weighing 145. Let alone pounds. a fullback right. making All-American. Well, you just hope his Bobcat team approaches the game the way he did. Or mimics his approach to the game. And that's hard nosed with tremendous discipline. And Tom Stokes just blew out of the booth as we give you the NIU Alumni Association scoring drive. Seven plays, 22 yards, it took 216. Nendick, a 36 yard field goal. I can't work your important notes. I, a, I don't have any important notes. And B, most of the things I write, I can't read anyway. I draw uh, pictures on most of my stuff. I was talking to Donna Turner, the new associate athletic director and runs the sports information office, we're playing, replacing Mike Corsick, the Hall of Famer, who has retired and is now SID Emeritus here. And we're going over some of the names and some of the notes, and I'm trying to read my own handwriting. The kickoff comes down right around the 12 yard line. Scott Mayo grabs it and runs it out to about the 20 to a gain. They're going to call it 13 yards on the return, and Ohio will go on the attack. First and 10, see where they end up spotting this. The 25 yard line. And the Bobcats need to get something going right now. They have the wind with them on this drive. They had a great opportunity. Unfortunately, Calvin McCray just fumbled the football after a nine yard gain on their last possession. Austin Everson is back in at quarterback number nine. Hands it off to Abrams, who drives his legs and it'll be blown dead right around the 30 31 yard line. A gain of six. They're going to call it second and four. They'd like to eat a little bit of the clock right now. Keep that Northern Illinois offense off the field. Wear down the front four of the Huskies.
try to establish a little bit of momentum of their own. After the game of six yards, it's second and four. You see once again Ohio having trouble running the football or establishing the run today. Hand off. Pick up about three. Von Kerry Owens, number 20, his first carry of the day. Senior tailback at 5'10. Von Kerry Owens, the ball carrier for Ohio. You see Ohio now attacking. Very active with the very light perimeter of the Northern defense. Third and one situation after a gain of three. Ken West, very active player on the edge, but still 6'1, 243. Larry English on the other side, only 236. So Huskies, as Tommy told you, an attack 4 3. And that play up oh, nearly sacked. Nearly sacked, incomplete. That one was blown up in the backfield and they missed the sack. Alva Hansborough had it. I don't know how Austin Everson kept his feet. Just a corner blitz from Hansborough. Nice play fake and the play was open. Everson just gets the ball up but can't set his feet and get it to his tight end. Last year will be in the punt again. Throw Tommy on third and one. Does that say we have no confidence in the running game or just trying to go with a surprise? Well, I'm a little surprised they did. Marcus Perez fields the punt. No, I'm with you. I'm a little surprised they just didn't buckle their chin straps and try to get the yard and extend the drive. 51 yards on the punt, five on the return, 17 7 when we come back with 640 to go in the second. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. The NIU defense on the sidelines talking about the ebb and flow of this game. It certainly looked like in the early going like the Northern offense was going to blow Ohio off the field. But we all know from watching football that offense there tends to be an ebb and flow. But what the defense is talking about is keeping up the pressure, keeping up the heat, staying consistent, and they know the offense will get a kick back into gear. David, back to you. Thanks, Jimmy. Horvath to the air finds Marcus Perez enough to move the chains. A gain of 12 on the play. Garrett Wolf, do you think he's tired at all? 90 yards in the first no, quarter. No, I don't think he's nine he, yards on his last four carries. No, he's not tired. He just hasn't gotten the cooperation from his offensive line, particularly in the center of that offensive line. As I said, this young man, for being five foot what seven and 175 pounds, he can run all day. You can give it to him 40 times today, and I don't think he'd be tired by the end of the game. Well, he's going to get one of those 40 right here. Wolf trying to turn the corner and he's knocked out of bounds. Run made by number one. Yeah, he didn't get a real good block from Britt Davis on the edge. We'll call it a gain of five, second and five. Gain of four yards. Well, he's certainly going to have a bullseye on his back the entire year, and, and defenses are going to come in with a game plan to slow him down and slow him down first and Phil Horvath's going to have to step up and make some plays at times. But the offense is going to run right through number one. Garrett Wolf gets the handoff here picks his way across the 35. A gain of three a gain of two and you just saw one of the, the subtle things that that make him such a great back. A defensive player shooting a gap looks like he's got Garrett down in the backfield and he just has got such great balance and great vision one little quick step and that defender misses Todd Koenig came up and laid the hit on him it's a third and four situation Horvath going to throw a quick throw and he misses his man Britt Davis pass sails out of bounds and that will mean the Huskies will punt the football away with 506 to go in the second quarter David Kaplan Tom Waddle and Jim Blaney with you here in DeKalb feel football weather in the air a little bit chillier than we've had to receive the punt from Andy Dittbender what's here the most wonderful time of the year the NFL season week one begins tomorrow well, I guess it'd be you know, Thursday with Pittsburgh's win, but for the most part, begins on Sunday. Chris Garrett, the deep man, did better to punt, gets it away, and it's a short kick. It's going to take a Husky roll, 
And it's going to roll dead right around the 31 yard line. A 32 yard kick. I hate to use this word because of my love of golf. I was hoping but you this would right use here it. is called a shank. Not what he won. But with the football season upon us and my golf clubs put away in the closet, I think I can get away with saying it, not giving myself the. Why do I not believe your clubs are put away for the year? They are. I said it last time, I'll say it again. Ohio needs a sustained drive. And they've got an eye formation. McCray, the tail of the tandem, gets the handoff with a big fullback out in front of him. And McCray picks his way for a gain of five, second and five. Adriel Hansborough, number 12, the man that made the tackle. Jason White, I believe, was in at fullback on that play. Leading the way for his tailback, Calvin McCray. Again, they'd like to control this clock from here to the end of the first half and possibly come away with some points. Austin Everson at quarterback. They just don't want to give Garrett Wolf another opportunity to carry the ball. And that is a real good throw. William Norwood, who caught the long touchdown earlier, makes the catch. A gain of 11 and a first down for the Ohio Bobcats. Just a nice job reading the defense. He feels the zone. Sits down, a good delivery from Austin Everson. I think this Bobcat team, both offensively and defensively, starting to find a rhythm a little bit. to McCray and that one's going to be bottled up quickly by the interior of that NIU line. I think Keenan Blaylark were, was among the guys in there that made the tackle plus Tim McCarthy and Corey Hansen. I'm going to tell you this the Bobcats are going to run that play a few more times. The Huskies are going to over pursue and they did a great job pursuing there but Everson's going to keep that ball and run to daylight and have himself a a, a real big game because right now this northern defense is defense is really not respecting Austin Everson as a runner game of one on the play a second and nine with an empty backfield McCray now split out wide Everson to the air throws and he's got his man football came out but I think the officials are going to say that he was down Justin Riley made the catch. Another example of a receiver finding a seam. Austin Everson, a nice job finding his receiver. Goes through his progression. Ball comes out late. That's not a fumble, but once again, the Bobcats find themselves in third and short. Third and two. Brown again gets into it. And they're controlling the clock at this point as well, which is what they wanted to do. Everson to the air. He's got room. Flips it out to McCray, who's got a lot of room when he runs out of bounds around the 36 yard line, 34 yard line. I think they're going to mark it a gain of 12. A well executed play, Tom. Well, this was the Bobcat offense we were expecting. Run the football, run the football, and a controlled passing game. And again, when you have success between the tackles, running the ball, things are going to open up in your passing game. They did a great job attacking the perimeter of that Husky defense. Again, out of the gun. They've moved it to the 34. They'll give it to McCray, and he cracks into the secondary for a very nice gain of eight. They are running the ball very effectively. Yes, they are. This is the type of drive Frank Solich wanted to see from his offense. Again, just attacking the center of the Husky defense. McCray, good strong runner. Everson looking, looking, hit as he throws, and he's got his man. That was a great throw with a lot of pressure on him. And that play's made possible by Calvin McCray, the tailback who just ran the football, steps up, picks up Larry English on the rush. Right there, you see on the corner of your screen, and Austin Everson again with a nice high percentage completion, or a nice high percentage pass. 
hands bro all the hands bro on the tackle and the clock continues to roll they're in no rush right now they do not want to give the football back to a, to a quick strike husky offense Everson looking looking throws and misses his man says to himself god how did I miss him he was wide open 104 to go second quarter very good football game you look at Frank Solich the head man at Ohio University they're going to win at Ohio it may take him some time to get his kids in the program his style of player but Frank Solich had tremendous success at Nebraska I believe he was fired after a nine and three season that's correct which is pretty hard to believe good decision by Solich here as well his tailback Calvin McCray a little gassed Austin Everson also a little confused at what was sent in. I think this was a good decision by Solich. The ninth play of this drive is coming up after we take this time out on Comcast Sports Net. 17-7, ninth play of the drive coming up. It's the battle of the bands here at halftime. There's a lot of great high school bands here in DeKalb that they all congregated down in that south end zone. Sounds like a reality show, Battle of the Bands. There you go. I think it was Vince Lombardi who said the last two minutes of the first half and the first two minutes of the second half, the two most important parts of a football game, and I think that's playing out right now. Everson on this drive, Tom, four of five, four different receivers. McCray, knocked down. Wow. That's one heck of an open field tackle by Alba Hamsbro. 5'10", senior, cornerback, steps up and makes the hit when he had to have it. Well-designed play. It's blocked well. McCray sees it right. Hansbro just makes a picture-perfect tackle. Nobody behind him saved the touchdown right there. Clock down to 35 seconds and running. A third and eight situation. Everson looking, looking, has time, throws, has his man into the end zone, I believe, did the football broke, come loose? No, he broke the plane. I think they're going to call this a touchdown. The ball did come out. And they will call it an Ohio touchdown. Rudy Silva, number 88, finds Pater. Real good throw here by Everson. Real good drive. Unchecked with the hit, balls across the plane. They may review this, but that's a touchdown. Drive took 434 to complete. Snap for the extra point, last year's kick. Perfect. And it's 17 14. Ohio gets what they need a long, sustained drive for a touchdown that's, as you look at Silver. That's a strike right there. Great throw. And again, the ball's across the plane. It does come loose. But that's exactly what the Bobcats needed going into halftime. Just a well-designed play. Good pitch, good catch. Now where does it come out is the question. Ball's over the line right there. That's a touchdown. Yes. Well, it's going to stay a touchdown because they kicked the extra that's point. Correct. Fifth different receiver on the drive. That's impressive. Well, that's a senior quarterback as well. Austin Everson. High percentage passes. Mix in the run with McCray. The Northern does have all three of their timeouts remaining. With just 20 and a half seconds to work with. Marcus Perez. And he doesn't have, Phil Horvath does not have the group of receivers he's had in recent years. The PJ Flex, the Dan Sheldons, Sam Hurd. That's correct. It's a good group led by Britt Davis, but it's an inexperienced group. In fact, I think you factor out. Britt Davis, the rest of their receivers combined for just 20 catches last season. So they're still feeling their way in this offense. Perez is going to bring it out, and Perez has a little room to run, and he'll be knocked down at the 22 or 23, a 24 yard return with 10 seconds left. And I think the new NCAA rule where the clock begins as soon as the kicker's foot hits the ball is really going to limit what they're able to do here with just a few seconds left. And now as the clock is set, 
they are going to go into halftime and not even get a play. That will be it. So the Huskies head to the locker room. With and welcome back to Husky Stadium. Jim Bryan along with Frank Solich. And Frank, am I watching a football game or am I watching a coach a chess match between two coaching staffs? No, it's a, it's a good football game. You know, they're so explosive on, uh, on offense that you can never take a deep breath because they have a chance to put it in, in the end zone. Of course, with Garrett on the ground, and they got an excellent throwing game. So we're going to have to take care of the ball. We had the one turnover. Neither team's had a sack. They've had four real explosive plays. We've only had a couple. We got to pick that up. But I am uh, feeling good about the fact that we were able to establish a couple drives against them, which uh, is critical. And you have to feel good about that drive down to the first half. Yeah, that, that was that was what we needed to uh, certainly get us back in this ball game, and then also keep their offense off the field. That'll accomplish a couple things. Coach, thank you for your time. Good right. luck in the second thank half, you. Dave and Tom. Back to you. You know. No, we're all working for the same bosses right now. I think I've said too much already. All right, here we go. Second half action. Marcus Perez and Britt Davis deep for Northern Illinois. Ohio will put it in play. Matt Lasher kicks it high. It'll come down right around two yards deep in the end zone. And Perez says, I'm coming out. And Perez turns the corner. There's a flag, a second flag comes flying. We'll find out just what it is. Looks like an illegal block. And there's a flag at about the 10 yard line, which means we're going to start with some pretty poor field position. A hole on Northern Illinois. And just in case that wasn't good enough, a they block a, in the back as well. A second penalty. So they will uh, mark this off, and Northern Illinois are going to start at their own five yard line. Wow, I wonder if that's a push in the back. You know, you're taught to be aggressive, but at the same time, it has to be controlled aggression. Smart, Smart aggression. aggression. That's right. And once a guy passes your face, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Horvath at the controls. Hands it to Garrett Wolf. And Garrett Wolf has a big seam. Garrett Wolf breaks free. Garrett Wolf all the way out to the 43 yard line. Ball running through a tackle there. Tony Ward at the worst end of this confrontation. It's again the stretch play and a huge hole created by that. Right there, there's Tony Ward. Oops. You know what, Tony, don't be embarrassed. Garrett Wolf has done that to a number of defenders over the last two and a half years. Todd Koenig with the tackle. Look at that. But a tremendous run gets him right out of trouble. 33 yards, he had only 16 in the second quarter. 33 on that one. And they're at the 38. And Brent Davis will throw it away. You do not know how good a play that was, that was by Brent Davis. Great play. That was set up as a bubble screen that was going to be a pass to, I believe it was Jarrett Carter that was running down the sideline, a double pass. Britt Davis, a quarterback last season before jumping to the wide receiver position. And at this point, he's just trying to make sure he doesn't come up with a negative play. And as long as he throws that ball past the line of scrimmage, that's not intentional grounding. What a heads up play by Britt Davis. Second and 10 after a bit of trickery by the Huskies. They'll hand it to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf. Boy, every time he makes that first wave of tacklers miss, you think there's a chance something special is going to happen. Koenig again in on the tackle. I don't know that you need to trick plays in the playbook when that young man is dotting your eye. Five on that one. It's a third and five situation. And again, just to stress what Britt Davis did, instead of taking a five or ten yard loss and having third and ten or third and fifteen, the fact that he got rid of that football makes this a manageable third down. Horvath throws and it's got his man. It's Britt Davis. And that's a first down. 
11 yards on that game. Two excellent plays on this drive. Britt Davis, just a simple out route. Little pivot route, turn to the inside, work to the outside. Phil Horvath with a nice throw, but again, that drive is kept alive by Britt Davis's decision a couple plays earlier to throw that ball away. Going down the field and nearly hits Britt Davis again. Just overthrown. I think Phil Horvath would like to have this one back. Just puts a little too much air underneath it. Just out, outside the reach of Britt Davis. A well-designed play. If he catches it, he's taking it in for six. Second and ten I at the Ohio 46. And I usually can't tell whether or not Joe Novak is upset or not because he normally gets that hands-on-the-knees position, and I don't know if he's disturbed or is he just catching a breather. Garrett Wolf takes the handoff, drives his legs. A gain of four on the play. This is a huge play in this ball game. Same play again. You see the entire left side of that offensive line. Poole come to the right, try to create a crease. Drive started at their own five. Well, and after Ohio took it in for the touchdown, to create some momentum for them, the Huskies come out with the opening kickoff in the second half. Very important for them to answer with a few points of their own. Third and six. Horvath under pressure, throws, and Brent Davis cannot come up with it. Horvath was belted down. Full safety blitz there. Tony Ward comes in. Tyler Rush from the weak side linebacker position. One, two, three. They're rushing eight. Eight Bobcats coming in on the rush. Got a wide open receiver. Yeah, Britt Brit Davis sitting down. Jake Nordine right down the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah Britt Davis sitting just beyond the third or the first down marker. Jake Nordine with no one on him. Koenig banged up a bit as he heads to the sideline. Get better, another punt, and this one's gonna roll and roll and is gonna stop at the 14-yard line. So a 28-yard punt, but good field position for the Husky defense inside the 20. We'll be right back at Comcast Sports Net. We are back in the cap. David Cap with Tom Waddle and Jim Blaney with you. First and 10 for Ohio at their own 15 is where they spot it. There's pressure, and it's thrown out of bounds. That's the first time we've seen Everson really under great duress. You're right. We talked about Tim it. McCarthy coming out of the half. The Huskies need to create some quarterback pressure and get Everson out of his rhythm. Good job right there. Just a blitz. McCarthy comes in, gets in Everson's face. Fortunately for the, the Bobcats, he throws it out of bounds. Good coverage on the play as well. Second and 10 at their own 15 with 12 18 to go, third quarter. Good Mid American Conference tilt here. Pressure's coming. And a real good throw. Everson took a seat again, but he was able to deliver it for a gain of five. Real solid play again, Tom. Yeah, but if you cannot put more pressure on the quarterback with seven and eight man rushes, he's going to do this to you because he's a veteran QB. He's going to take the hit. Ryder coming in from his safety position. But again, if you're going to bring seven or eight defenders after the quarterback, you have to get into the turf or you're exposing your secondary to big plays. Here's a third and five, a key situation for Ohio. He handles the snap and he finds his big tight end again. They made a living. Rudy Sylvan made the catch. Sits down in the middle of the field and gets a first down. They found some soft spots in that 
Husky defense just finding zones. You see Mark Ryder losing his footing. But Sylvan does a great job finding his seam in between the linebackers and just throwing again a high possession, high uh, percentage pass and moving the chains. This is exactly what Coach Solich wanted. Gain of nine. It's a first and ten at the 29. A handoff around the corner, and Tim McCarthy, I believe, came over with Dustin Utchick. Was that Utchick who made the tackle? Chris Garrett was the man that carried the football. Oh, Ohio now also showing some different looks on offense. This is a two tight end set, the reverse. Great job by Utchick sniffing it out. That was all Utchick. It was a nice job limiting the play, just five yards. Gain of five and a second and five at the 34. McCray picks his way near a first down. Well, they're attacking that northern defense with a lot of misdirection. They'll call that a four yard gain, maybe four and a half. It's going to be close, but just short of a first down. So it's a third and one. Good job by McCray finding a little seam, getting some positive yardage, but I'm telling you right now, I mentioned it in the first half. Austin Everson is going to make that fake one of these days and find some daylight going the other direction. They get enough push and they will have a first down. Gain of three, he needed one, he got it. That's a 220 pound quarterback. There you see the push. Nice job again by Tim McCarthy. Effort. Tim McCarthy does a nice job filling the hole, but Everson's done a nice job today. Haven't seen much of Brad Bauer because Everson's played so well. Time. It's going to be the quarterback Everson who keeps it this time, as you said, off the fake. I think, I think left my side in a big game. My headset, Frank Solich, has just got crossed there, I believe. I think they finally heard what I was saying. 13 That's, yards on that play. This particular play has been there all afternoon. If you keep hitting them with that misdirection with McCray, sooner or later, you got to keep them honest. And Austin Everson does just that. What a gorgeous animal that is. The Husky dog. Everson's got this Husky defense panting as well right now. Garrett, the man in motion. They're going to give it to Garrett, and Garrett will pick up. They'll call it two. With every positive play, though, this Bobcat offense is getting more and more confident. McCarthy and Crutch combined on the stop. Ninth play of the drive that started at the 15-yard line. You just saw Brad Bauer, the other quarterback the Bobcats use. He might as well put his helmet away. Everson's playing good football this afternoon. Here comes pressure, and he has belted down. I take that back. Maybe Bauer ought to go get his helmet if they keep hitting Everson like that. Corey Hansen was free and clear on a blitz, and he belted Austin Everson. Now you see again, here come seven Huskies. Unblocked to the quarterback, Corey Hansen. But once again, they do not get to Everson in time to register the sack. He gets rid of the ball. Third and eight now. 8.47 to go in the third. Everson looking, looking, has time, throws, it's got his man. Money pass right on the numbers. Scott Mayo, their leading receiver, makes the catch. It's a first down and a gain of 27 yards. The Huskies are just not getting any pressure on the quarterback with their standard four-man rush. And Everson continues to find the open receiver. 
Wasn't the most aesthetically pleasing throw I've ever seen, but certainly very effective. McCray, McCray picking his way inside the five-yard line. And now the Husky defense has got to honor the, the fact that Everson may keep this ball. So not only do they have to defend McCray, but they also have to be aware that Everson may keep it himself. Gain of 15 yards and a first and goal at the Northern Illinois four-yard line. And the Northern defense is tired right now. Well, wholesale changes on that D-line. Toss to McCray. McCray trying to turn the corner, picking his way, and he's in. Get him six. Touchdown, Ohio Bobcats, and they've got the lead. That's how you put together a drive, young high school football coaches. You mix the run and the pass, and right here, McCray seems to be getting stronger with each carry. Does a great job feeling a seam. Mark Ryder steps up and misses the tackle. McCray does a fabulous job finding the end zone. A 12 play, 85 yard drive. That was methodic. Extra point by last year's perfect. We are breaking. Possession change coming up. Bobcats 21, Huskies 17. In the count. the Husky Stadium with Ohio now leading Northern Illinois 21-17. And remember how this game started off for the Ohio offense. Their first two plays of the game, they didn't even get the playoff. They had false start penalties. Now the guys are over here on the bench. They're saying to each other, look at the scoreboard. We have battled our way back. We need to keep battling. David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. They're playing very good football. Last two Ohio drives. Check this out, Tom. 22 plays, 154 yards, and two touchdowns. That was surgical, that last drive. You called it methodical, I called it surgical. Brent Davis on this kick return, and he's going to come up short of the 20. It'll be about the 17-yard line. I'd like to thank our great crew up here. Todd Armour, our longtime spotter, and the best stat man in the business, Ethan Cooperson. He's off to New England for the Buffalo New England game tomorrow. He's got better things to do than hang with us. So he's exactly leaving quickly. Right. Bobcat scoring drive, 12 plays, 85 yards. They needed 439 to find pay dirt, a four yard TD run for Calvin McCray. Well, we revisit the keys to the game. We talked about it at the start of this ball game. Garrett Wolf needs more carries. They had to shut down that Ohio offense to keep them from running the football. They haven't been able to do that, and turnovers really haven't been a factor so far today. Carter makes the catch. And he is smacked down after a gain of three. No reason to panic either if you're right. Joe Novak the tackle. and the Huskies. They've got the most explosive running back in, in college football. They've got more than 22 minutes left in this ball game, and you're going to get the wind in the fourth quarter. So they go back to their game plan, which is a lot of number one. Horvath looking, throws, has Brent Davis. That's a first down out to the 33. Gain of 13. Huskies moving. Garrett Wolf showing you he can be a blocker as well. He's out in front protecting Phil Horvath. You see, Brent Davis just coming in, sitting down, finding a, a hole in that defense. Look at that. Garrett Wolf actually getting a hand, creating a little space for his quarterback. Protecting his crew. Tell you what, Britt Davis has really taken to the wide, uh, wide receiver position well in a short period of time. Horvath looking, looking down the sideline, and it dropped by Garrett Wolf. Would have been a tough catch. Well designed play, just a wheel route. Cover of the play by Tyler Russ, number 26 for Ohio. You see Wolf run to the flat and then turn it up. Bill Horvath just throws it behind him. A play I'm sure Garrett thinks he should have made. But if Horvath hits him in stride, that may turn into six. Horvath 
Looking throws, got Britt Davis, that's a Northern Illinois first down. I was just mentioning, I'm really impressed with Britt Davis who came to Northern as a quarterback and actually took some snaps as a quarterback last year. He's just got a great feel for the wide receiver position. Helped by being an ex-quarterback, does a nice job keeping his feet in bounds and also catching the football with his hands. Very explosive player. At the 46, they give it to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf turns the corner. Garrett Wolf into the secondary. Stiff arms his way to the 37 yard line. Gain of 17 more. Britt Davis participates with a catch to play before. Now he's going to help Garrett Wolf as a lead blocker out there. I love that from Garrett Wolf. He's not going to sit back and allow defensive players to tee off on him. Yeah, he goes out of bounds, but at the same time, he delivers a he blow. He delivers a little I'll bit of a the blow. Late to great Walter Payton. To TJ Wright. Hand off to Garrett Wolf. Drives to the 35 yard line. Gain of a yard, maybe a yard and a half. We talked about being the bug on some plays and the windshield on others. Matt Muncy was the windshield on that play. Garrett Wolf, the bug. 166 total rushing yards from Garrett Wolf to this point. I thought 150 would be good for a Husky victory. Garrett Wolf, and this one goes nowhere. He's going to lose yardage. I think Garrett's Marcus a little. Marcus Parham hit him. I think Garrett Wolf's a little tired right now. They had him in the passing game running down the sideline. They've given him the football. Really just nowhere to go. Nice play. Yeah, he's going to come out from right the now. edge. Yeah, but Garrett looks a little, a little gassed right now. Montel Clinton, who's a sophomore back out of Rockford, Illinois, will come in and replace Garrett Wolf here. But an think, obvious passing now. I think Superman even slept at times as well, didn't he? A bit. Not often, but just a little bit. Snap to Horvath. Looking, there's a hole coming up on Doug Free. Horvath's going to run for about eight, but it's all for naught. They're going to get Doug Free, I believe, on a hold. The All-American was nailed there. You could see it all the way. Watch it right at the top of your screen there. Coming up on the right side, and there's the hold right there, and the flag flies. They really didn't need to do it because Phil Horvath was feeling the pressure, and had already rolled. rolling out at, at that time anyway. Holding 70 of the offense. 10 yards from the previous They're spot. Calling it on 70, but that is not, I believe, where the penalty came. I'm with you. I think Doug Free was the culprit there. As I said earlier, I don't care who your offensive coordinator is. I don't know that. Yeah, the mile now, third and 20. You have a whole lot of third and 20 yard plays that you complete or convert with any degree of regularity. Horvath looking, going down the field, and it's broken up. Britt Davis nearly caught it. Crowd wanted a flag for pass interference, not going to get it. The Huskies are punted away. Now the penalty kills him on this drive. Horvath has time. Ball floats on him a little bit. I'm not sure that Britt Davis was going to be in bounds if he caught that ball anyway. Again, third and 20. I'm going to convert that very often. Chris Garrett is the deep man. Andy Dittbetter, the punter, the sophomore. Gets it away. A driving kick. Garrett takes it. Going to bring it. And he'll be knocked down at the 25 yard line after a. 34-yard punt, a 12-yard return. We are breaking. Don't go away, folks. We got a real good football game going on in DeKalb, Illinois. Ohio, 21. Northern Illinois, 17. In the in today's game against Ohio, the Huskies need to make some hay. Three consecutive conference games at home. And McCray breaking tackles. McCray up the sideline. Big game for Calvin McRae, and you can see the life 
in the Ohio sideline. 17 yard game. And no doubt they're starting to become more and more confident that they can move the ball in this front seven of Northern Illinois. There's a reason why Calvin McRae was an all Mac performer last season. He's got a tremendous amount of talent. They are certainly having a much better day on offense than they did last week against Tennessee Martin. Picked off and a flag's gonna fly. Are we gonna have an interference call? Austin Everson had a mile to run if he would have tucked that ball. You'll see that he wants to tuck and go with it. He could have. Ball, nice guy. Looked like the ball was tipped. We're gonna Offensive catch, pass yeah, interference. We'll catch the Bobcats for offensive pass interference. Maybe there's a reason why he was so wide open. You got away with that a few times in your career. A little shove here and there. Interference on the offense. Blocking downfield while the pass is in the air. It's interference and it's still for three points. It's not cheating unless you get caught. That's right. So it'll be a first and 25. I don't think Austin Everson is done running the football today, okay? I'm Joe Novak, I'm telling my linebackers, keep an eye on the quarterback. Swing pass. And a real good game. They'll get 10 yards back. Taylor Price made the catch, number 23. Now Ohio just caught Northern in a horrible defense. They're coming after him with an eight-man rush. Great job, Everson gets the ball out on the edge. Called it a gain of 14 on the play. And it is a second, about 11, maybe 10 yards. Sometimes good fortune is your greatest ally, just a great call for that particular defense. Everson looking, looking, tosses it. McCray, McCray breaks one tackle, and McCray's gone. McCray to the house, a big Ohio touchdown, Kelvin McCray. I don't think there's any doubt the Ohio Bobcats are winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line is getting the best of the front four of the Northern Illinois Huskies. This play has been there all afternoon. You saw McCray fumble it earlier in the first half. A huge seam, and then Tim McCarthy just misses the tackle. You're not going to arm tackle Calvin McCray. Well designed. And then McCray just at 5'11", 210 pounds at good speed, finds his way into the end zone. Extra point perfect, and all of a sudden, the Huskies find themselves 11 points down. Again, this is an Ohio offense that was only able to rack up 144 yards against Division I AA Tennessee Martin. Today, they've gone right through the Husky defense. Two long TD drives, now a quick strike for a touchdown. Three touchdowns in their last three drives. And again, a, a veteran quarterback, a senior quarterback, does a great job selling pass. McCray does a nice job being patient, finds a little bit of a hole, and then Tim McCarthy had a chance to get him down there. You're just not going to arm tackle. An all-conference performer like Calvin McRae. Come outside, man. That little thing I swear was nice and bad time. Bad time. Every time. Again, though, with three minutes to go in the third quarter, I don't think Joe Novak and the Huskies can panic. Garrett Wolf can get to the end zone just as quick as Calvin McRae. But they got to get back to getting the ball to Garrett. They do, and they have to protect the football. They got to protect themselves from turnovers, and they, they have to quit committing penalties. The hold by Doug Free really killed the drive on the last possession for the Huskies. That one's going to sail to the back of the end zone where 
Marcus Perez says no thank you and the Huskies will go on the attack into the wind. First to 10 at their own 20. Last three Ohio drives, 25 plays, 229 yards, and three touchdowns. It has to be really disappointing for this Husky defense. They are just losing at the line of scrimmage. Denny Dornbus, the defensive coordinator, really has not had an answer for this balanced attack of the Bobcats all afternoon. Garrett Wolf, single back set as he's been all afternoon long and they give it to Wolf right here. Garrett Wolf will pick his way for six yards. Well on his way to a 200 yard day. We talked about it earlier with each snap that Ohio offense is becoming more and more confident. Jordan Myers made the tackle. Huskies need to answer that score with one of their own to get themselves back in this ball game. Gator six, Prism Central four for the 26. Todd Koenig made the, uh, the hit on Garrett Wolf. We're down to 225 in the third. Well, you just see the Look Bob at Joe Novak there. Now the Bobcats have a little bit more of a swagger. It's almost as if the Huskies are waiting for something bad to happen at this point. They had such success attacking the perimeter of that Ohio defense with Garrett Wolf. They've really Ohio shored things up on defense the last several drives. Horvath pressured, pressured, throws, and it's incomplete. Looking for Britt Davis. And I'll tell you what, there was a little talking going on after the incompletion. And the officials not hesitant to throw flags on that, but nothing, no yellow laundry there. Well, you see, Britt Davis has actually got the inside position on Michael Mitchell. You see right there. A little bit of talking. That is not what Frank Solich wants to see. No, he doesn't. This Northern offense is just completely out of sync right now. Punt comes down, and it will be down at the 42 yard line, a 34 yard punt. Well, this defense is called an attack 4 3 for Northern, and they really haven't done a whole lot of attacking today. A couple of years back, they prided themselves on sacks and turnovers, and really the big plays defensively haven't been there for Northern. But you have to give Ohio a ton of credit. They were a, an awful group last week offensively, and they have been outstanding so far through almost three quarters of football. On Kerry Owens is the deep man now. Austin Everson throws and finds his man. Finds his man, the big tight end that was out there was Cody Carr, 6'5, makes the catch and rumbles his way for 13 yards. We've seen this a lot today. Northern is just a step away from the quarterback. They just can't get Everson down on the ground for the big play. It actually was Rudy Silvan who's had an excellent game today. I thought I saw 89 in there. Austin Everson has played a mistake-free football game so far today. He has been what you expect from a senior. Absolutely. And Von Carey Owens, number 20 with the carry. They're just playing with tremendous confidence right now, especially up Gain front four. on that offensive line. Regardless of who's carrying it right now, there are some seams. And they're doing a fine job. As we talked about earlier, it's a veteran offensive line, three returning starters. Everyone's at least a junior. This will be the final play of this quarter. They'll hand it off again to Owens. And he'll be knocked down after a gain of maybe two, maybe two. 
That's going to be the final play of the third quarter, but a good quarter for the Ohio Bobcats. Ohio 28, Northern Illinois 17, 15 minutes to go. We'll be right back with Comcast Sports Net. Waddle Jim Blaney, 28-17 Ohio, but Calvin McRae has been everything that we thought he would be and more, Tommy. Well, there's a reason why he was a 2005 All-Conference player, rushed for over almost 1,200 yards last season. He's done everything today. He's seen the hole, he's gotten through the hole, and he shows you good speed as well. He's a big, strong kid with a lot of quickness, a lot of vision, and he has certainly answered Garrett Wolf's challenge today. Now the sea of red rises as one, third and four, the start of the fourth quarter. Can the Huskies contain him? It will be an Ohio first down. William Norwood makes the catch. Another good throw from Austin Everson, who has played a whale of a football game. Yeah, when you're rushing seven defenders and you can't get to the quarterback, you're just asking your cornerbacks to do too much. And right there, Everson had too much time to throw the football. He gains six. We're going to talk with Northern Illinois' great vice president and athletic director, Jim Phillips, in just a moment as I watch more of your game notes blow out of the booth. Again, I didn't have anything important written on it. First and ten. An option pitch. Football's loose and Northern Illinois got it. Paul Pongrus and Kenny West was the man who recovered it. Dustin Utschick with a huge play, exactly what the Huskies needed, a well-designed play. Everson with a little faith in the option, and Garrett puts it on the ground thanks to the big hit from Utschick. And Kenny West on the spot at the right time. A huge momentum changer and a huge play by a young man who led the back in tackles last season, Dustin Utschick. That is exactly what NIU needed. They got to stop. They took the drive away, and now they're going up top and going for it all. Ball's down there, and Perez has got it. First to ten for Northern Illinois. A big, big game. 41 yards, Horvath to Perez. Off the second Ohio turnover, Huskies in business. You think you can feel the momentum changing right now? Wow. Just a great throw. And an even better catch by Marcus Perez. That does a, is a great play. Does a great job concentrating on the football. Goes up and catches the tip of the football at its highest point. Just a great individual effort. Jim Phillips is with us. Jim, you weren't feeling great walking in here at the start of the quarter. You gotta feel better right now the way momentum is, Jim. We really needed the big play that you guys described. That was a big fumble recovery. But uh, all the credit to Ohio for, through the first three quarters. I mean, it's been a smash mouth football game up front, and uh, but that's why you play four, as you guys know. So well, let's you, see if we can get a little momentum and, and, going. And you can't panic if if you're the Huskies right now because you have such an explosive weapon. And Garrett Wolf, you've got a veteran quarterback out there, Phil Horvath. So certainly, 15 minutes is a lot of football. He's a game changer for sure. Oh, unbelievable! And they're going to measure on this one. We were talking a little bit ago about your new academic and athletic performance center down in the north end zone. Looks phenomenal. And when do you expect that to be done? We'll be uh, we'll be opening the doors next summer. So we're about 10 months away. 60,000 square feet academic center, state of the art computer labs, tutorial area, study area, classrooms, um, and then huge strength and conditioning center, sports medicine and rehabilitation center, uh, team locker room, equipment room, and then upstairs is all football. That's uh, coaches' offices and meeting rooms. But your office will remain over at the convocation, convocation center. Correct. It's a second and one. Horvath looking, looking, throwing. Touchdown. Give it six. Marcus Perez, Northern Illinois. I tell you what, that was a great wrap by Marcus Perez. Sold the pumps, went to the corner, and just shook Mark Parson. Bill Horvath steps up, gets protection, and you'll see nobody around Marcus Perez. He turned Parson around like a top. Now they will go for two, which would get them within a field goal. 
A lot of coaches will disdain the two early in the game, but at this point, the chart, Tommy, says you got to go for the deuce. Well, you have number one, Dot in your eye as well. He's averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry over the course of his career, a veteran quarterback. I think you like your chances, plus you build on the momentum that you've just found. Better get the play moving. Your play clock is down to six seconds. Northern Illinois is going to have to use a timeout here. That cannot make Joe Novak happy. It's called a party timeout. So involved celebrating the good fortune that you forgot what was going on. That will be one I'm sure that he will talk with his coaches and his players about. Look at the touchdown again. Just a tremendous drive. And Marcus Perez, you can't see it at the top of your screen. Trust me, he just ran a great post corner route. Found himself all alone. And this is the type of drive that a defense that has struggled all game long can actually gain some confidence from. Jim, you gained a big promotion back in July. You're now vice president at the University. Congratulations. Thanks, Cap and uh, Tom. Appreciate that. But as you guys know, you're only as good as that group that's with you. And we have a tremendous athletic department staff. So any rewards that maybe come my way is certainly a direct reflection of that group that works hard for us every day. Getting back to the, as you like to call it, the AAPC, the building at the north end, that's going to be a huge help in recruiting. When you go into a home and you tell a parent, look, this this is our commitment to academics. It's a great school, but look what we've got. That's tough to beat. Hey, young kids today, as you know, are great consumers, and they want to know where they're going to learn and train and, and do the things that, that, that they, they want to do during a college experience, get a degree and uh, be the best student athlete that they possibly can. So you need to support them with facilities like that. All right, the Huskies look for the two-point conversion to shave it to a three-point game. They're going to throw. Horvath looks, and it's knocked away. Incomplete. They were, Matt Muncy was the man that got a hand on it. You see Phil Horvath just throws it to the wrong shoulder of Jake Nordine. Matt Muncy makes a great play. But if he throws it to Nordine's outside shoulder, you may have a two-point conversion. Yep, exactly right. So it will remain. A five point game with 1330 to go a ton of time but this is a huge huge possession for Ohio's offense and NIU's defense got a nice crowd here today Jim good crowd yeah good crowd good good turnout uh, quite a few groups out here as we, we always try and uh, uh, strategically garner some of that attention from the uh, western suburbs but great day for band day we had about over 2,000 band members from high school all over the area, over the region. That uh, quite a thrill for them to perform at halftime down on Brigham Field. Yeah, to speak of recognition, I mean, obviously very difficult Saturday last week. You go into the horseshoe and play the number one team in the nation, but also some great recognition for your program. It is, Tom, and I think we've talked before. Athletics is, 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 as we like to term it, is the front porch to the university. Not nearly even close to being the most important, but certainly the most visible. And you can garner some attention for your department of accountancy or your engineering school through athletics. Um, and, and that's what we've been able to do, as you articulated over the last several weeks. Nendick to put it back in play. Deep kick through the back of the end zone. No return. Ohio goes on the attack. First to 10 at their own 20 yard line. Huge, huge stand for the Northern Illinois defense right now. They've got to come out, stiffen their spine, and try and get a three and out. Let's go down to the field to Jim Blaney. All right, David, it's amazing the difference in the messages from the defensive coaching staff to the players the last two times they've come off the field. Two possessions ago, and they came off after the Ohio touchdown. To put it mildly, it was a kick in behind, wrap up, and play to win, not to lose. Then when they came off after the turnover, back to X's and O's. Back to you, David. All right, Jimmy Austin, Everson rolling under some pressure. He's going to throw this one away. That's the second time today that I remember real solid, solid pressure on him. Yeah, Brandon Bice gets to Everson, and again, as a veteran, a, a senior, Everson just throws it away and doesn't take the negative play. That has got to be something that this week, Jim, your coaching staff is going to work on getting to the quarterback. Thank you, right, Cap. Good things happen when you take the opposing quarterback to the ground. Second and 10 of the 20.
Calvin McCray tries to squirt away and is not going to get very far. A gain of just three. A third and seven. Perhaps the biggest play of the day for the Northern Illinois defense right now. Great pursuit by the Husky defense again. McCray trying to find a seam and it looks like he's got it and then it closes quickly. And I think he banged up his shoulder. Another nice play by Brandon Bice and then Mark Ryder comes in to clean things up. Or did he get a cramp? It could be a cramp. Well, he's had a long day, a long productive day. But on a third and seven. Husky defensive coordinator Denny Dornbus probably not heartbroken that number five will spend this play on the sidelines. He's had a great afternoon. You can tell he's a little woozy. He's had the wind knocked out of him, but he has had, as you said, an excellent day. Plus that long touchdown. Which is actually listed as a reception, but. 31 Josh Abrams will be the man that replaces Calvin McCray. Everson ducks under center, looks, throws. A horde of red shirts, but it should be enough for an Ohio first down, a gain of eight on the play. Cheeto Noakocha made the catch. The Huskies rush three and drop eight. And Everson, boy, he throws a nasty looking ball, but it is always on mark. First That's and a, ten now. a huge third down conversion. Ohio today, eight of 12 on third down. When you're 8 of 12 on third down and you had 140 plus total offense a week ago, you've really stepped your play up. Down to the sideline to Jim Blaney. All right, David, the word on McCray and his injury, it appears to be just cramps. They are getting him hydrated. They are getting some ice onto his right calf. He's staying on the sideline. He hasn't even gone back to the training table. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. A second and 11 situation now. Again, keep an eye on Austin Everson. A good runner and a good thrower. Toss again to Noah Kocha. And again, it's going to be a look around eight yards like, on that play. That's the second time Northern has come after the quarterback with an all out blitz. And they either checked to this swing pass or they had it called. Third and two. They'll give him nine on the play. Everson, whether he's calling his own plays or audible and at the line of scrimmage, just is the perfect call for that particular defense. And again, third and two at the 39. But, but Cray still on the sideline. Nail the man in motion. The toss, the swing, and that going to be awfully close. I think he's got the first down. Boy, Josh Abrams just doing a great job making Husky Abrams. defenders miss. Yes, it is enough for an Ohio University first down. Just a, again, a little swing route. And throw has a chance. Yeah, if the initial wave gets him, he's well short. Just did a nice job making guys miss. As you say, Bobcats have been outstanding on third down today. First to 10 at the 42. See the Husky tacklers pawing at that football. And Adriel Hansbro brings Abrams down after a gain of five. Jim, the rest of your athletic department also looking up. Things going well with the beautiful basketball Things facility. And Carol Owens is now firmly entrenched as the women's coach. Rob Judson on the men's side. And all your other sports. Things look Things really are good. good. We had a big win in volleyball today. We went to B we went to Connecticut and played BC and swept them three nothing. The Huskies wow. shut out the Eagles. I know Tommy cringes head, when I said that. My headset's not working. What was that? We'll get to that after this next play. Mr. Boston College grad was swept by the Huskies today. 
Everson on that little toss again. And Abrams gonna be knocked down. They've run that play fairly successfully all day long. They have. Tim McCarthy was the man that made the stop. Again, Everson does an excellent job setting it up. You know what? Right there, Josh Abrams just not as patient as Calvin McCray was a little bit earlier in the game. That's the one McCray broke to the house. That's right. I, I think Calvin McCray obviously sells it a little better than Abrams. But again, another huge third down. Ohio University this half, six of six on third down. That's tremendous. That, that is, is tremendous. Tremendous productivity. Third and four at the 48. The crowd rises again. Everson looking, looking, has time, throws, and it is caught for an Ohio University first down. Not seven of play. seven. Yeah, you, as you said earlier, Jim, you got to give, you have to give this Bobcat team a lot of credit. Well, Jim, we wish you best of luck the rest of the way. And Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you throughout the season. Sounds good. Thanks. Right, that's our man, Jim good Phillips, you, Jim. the very fine athletic director here at Northern Illinois. We thank him for stopping by. This is a very impressive performance by Austin Everson today, the Ohio quarterback. And this time he keeps it as you said he would. He'll gain, what, five yards there? Perhaps five yards is what they'll call it. That play has been there all afternoon. As you see now, lots of substitutions on each and every play from the Husky defense. They're just not getting a whole lot of performance from their front seven today. Bobcats have controlled the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line versus the Husky front four. And they Second are, and five. And they are, drips toward eight minutes. They are eating the clock up. Von Kerry Owens is the man now in the backfield, and Von Kerry Owens is hit. We've got a flag on the play. I think they, they've got Tommy Stuck, I believe. Yes, they do. They're going to get Tommy Stuck on a hold, and that is a critical penalty. Now, when you run a lot of misdirection run plays, you've got linemen pulling. There are plenty of opportunities for them to do something To wrong. reach out and touch someone. Ten yards in the previous spot. Still second. Well, this is huge because Ohio was moving the ball so well. And you see just a oh. horrible decision. Stuck his beat off the top. He grabbed Keenan Blaylark. There's just a no question. Bad about decision. It. Both teams playing disciplined football today. A whole lot of penalties. Frank Solich. He and Joe Novak coached in the hula ball together a few years ago. Second and 15. Everson throws. And they'll gain a chunk of it back as Cheeto Noakocha makes the catch a gain of six and a third and nine situation. I, I tell you, Adriel and Alva Hansbro have really impressed me today with their ability to come up and make tackles from the corner position. Just a great job. That's a big time tackle. Adriel Hansbro fighting off a block. Coming up with a big defensive play. Again, the Huskies have to put pressure on Austin Everson. Crowd into it. Looks like they're coming after it. Seven of seven this half on third down. And a long throw, and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, miscommunication. First time this half they've missed on third down. Justin, a fourth coming up. Yeah, Justin Fitzgerald was running a comeback. Austin Everson thought he was running a streak. Huskies are going to get it back with 6.54 to go. With the wind. The drive ate up over 6.30, though. Punt's going to hit and it's going to roll into the end zone. Lasher not happy with himself. It rolls into the end zone. 44 yards, a net of 24. Huskies get it at the 20. When we come back with 6.48 to go in DeKalb, Illinois. To DeKalb. 28-23. The Huskies have the football. They trail by five. Hand off Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf breaking tackles. Garrett as well. They had it grabbed and that made 
might tack on 15 more. Yeah, I believe you're going to get a personal foul on this one. It wasn't a smooth play to begin with. It looked like Phil Horvath and Garrett Wolf had a little trouble on the exchange. That will be a 15-yard personal foul face masking penalty. And just a little draw play. He gets some help from his offensive line. And then Garrett Wolf, how many times has Tony Ward swung and missed today? Again. Garrett Wolf will do that to a number of defenders. Shane Yates was the man guilty of the infraction. Number 74, 6'2", 280, a senior, plays nose guard. Grabbed some face masks. Horvath looking, going long. Look at the Perez, and it's going to be thrown out of bounds. A lot of wind up there. Yeah, it's a tough day to throw the ball. Again, as Garrett Wolf averages 6.6 .6 yards per carry over the course of his career, I'm not so sure I wouldn't be calling his number on every single down at this point. Horvath looking, looking, throws. It's got his man. back to Palman with Garrett Wolf. Well, once again, Garrett Wolf shows you why he's such a valuable player. Phil Horvath rolls out. Wood gets just enough of the outside linebacker to allow this play to happen. Matt Simon, nice reception, a huge first down. Horvath under center, going to give to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf breaks a tackle. Rips yeah, off another chunk carrier. of yardage. I have to say, despite Garrett Wolf's success today, and he's got to be closing Matt in on Muncy 200 yards, tackle. Matt Muncy, the middle linebacker for Ohio, is a tremendous football player. Just great vision again, but Muncy hangs on a sure tackle. I think you'll see number 50 playing on Sundays in the National Football League next season. Matt Muncy, a great player for that Ohio defense. Second and five at the Ohio 33 clock, dripping toward 530. The they are, Horvath gets it away, and it's incomplete. He was belted. Lost his helmet. Matt, was that yeah. Matt Muncy who got him again? It was. Huge third down. This was the difference between the, the Bobcat defense and the Husky defense. They actually get a helmet on the quarterback. Listen to the hit. Bring in the heat. Thump is never a good sound. Is that the bug or the windshield? Uh, I think uh, Phil was the bug there. Incomplete. Trying to hit Britt Davis. I'm not sure he was going real far with it if he caught it. Just a little wide receiver screen, the bubble screen, and they're running it into the boundary, which means they don't have a whole lot of space to work in. The Britt Davis just doesn't come up with it. Looks like the Huskies are going to go for it here on fourth and five. Two timeouts left for Northern. Fourth down and five to go. Do you dare run the football to Garrett Wolf here? I think you try to find a way to get it into his hands. Accepted again. Tremendous pressure. Horvath loses his helmet once again as well. Tony Ward drilled him. And Ohio's going to take over with 5.18 to go. Again, the Bobcats just get the pressure on the quarterback. They'll take over. All right, we're going to take a timeout. 5.18 to go. Little curious, the decision 23 Ohio. on offense by the Huskies on that last drive. Last four downs, they ran it once with Garrett Wolf and threw it three times. While in Bobcat territory. Everson's going to keep it. Everson up the sideline and to the 45-yard line and up for a first down. 
He has played a flawless game today. He really has. Does a nice job running the option here. Just the fake pitch. Does a nice job protecting the football as well. Not only gets 11 yards in the first down, also of 11 yards. takes care first of the big skin. We were told they were going to split quarterback duty today, Austin Everson and Brad Bauer, but it's been all Austin Everson today. Yep, Bauer in just for a couple plays while Austin Everson went to the locker room and then came right back and hasn't given the job up since. And McCray breaks across the 35. Actually down to near the 40-yard line. Well, again, 13 yards on that carry. The Bobcat offensive line, as they say, is imposing their will on the front four of Northern. McCray's a strong runner. Give him a little bit of a seam, and he's going to hit it. You know they're going to take their time getting out of the huddle right now. Lead that clock. Inside four minutes now. They'll hand it off. Gain of a yard, maybe two. Maybe two. Mitch Morcillo. Big fullback. 6'1, 246. Hey, Husky fans, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKal. Great, great place. Is your official NIU Husky tailgate headquarters. Get your tailgate passes today for Fatty's ultimate tailgate at Iowa, October 28th in Iowa City, Iowa. Three hours of tailgating right next to Kinnick Stadium. It's going to be a great, great time. For more information, go to www.fattyspub.com. Austin Everson rolling, rolling. He's got a ton of real estate and goes down. Boy, it looked like he had that sideline to turn it up, but did well, not his, work out that way. His primary goal was to stay in bounds and not stop the clock. 3.09 to go. Again, a well-designed play, a great play fake. And right here, tell you what, just a great play also by Ke Keenan Blaylar. The close up. It took, took the block and made the tackle. Well-timed timeout by the Huskies right here. Huskies have one left. It's a third and six. And this is a huge play, to say the least, Tommy. McCray, 83 receiving yards, 82 rushing yards, one rushing TD, one receiving TD in today's game. Those numbers are impressive, but I think that young man right there, number nine, Austin Everson, is their MVP this afternoon. Been great. He's done everything they've asked him to do. What do you do defensively here? I think you have to come after him. Sooner or later, the young man's going to make a mistake. Here's a look at Garrett Wolf you've got itching for a chance. You've got two senior cornerbacks in the Hansborough brothers. Man them up, play press coverage. Take your chances getting to the quarterback. They have not been able to apply pressure to Everson today with just a, a bland four-man rush. Again, the sea of Husky Red on both sides of the field rises as one. Out of the gun, Everson pressure, throws, and that's going to be an Ohio first down. Huge play, Calvin McCray. Great throw. They have game planned perfectly this afternoon. Every time the Huskies have come after them with any number of guys in a blitz, they have either had a swing pass called or a screen called. And again, I think that, that Frank Solich knew that the Huskies were going to come after Everson. It's just a great play call. And Joe Novak, you can see, just not happy with his defensive effort today. Bradley Pruitt made the tackle. Clock now at 240. Now hand it off, Calvin McCray. Calvin McCray to the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio Bobcats. And that could be the backbreaker. I think I just may have changed my MVP vote from Austin Everson to Calvin McCray. This was a Garrett Wolf type run. Just great vision. Bounces it outside. 
And good speed. He gets to the corner. And he beats Hansbro to the end zone. Adriel Hansbro was the man 12 who had a shot possibly. But McCray turned down the Jets and he was gone. Extra point up, extra point good. 35 23, 231 to go. We'll take a timeout. The Huskies, their backs against the wall. We'll find out can they answer after this on Comcast Sports Net. Yards. They'll combine, they're up over 400, aren't they? That's correct. McCray is just over 200, 206, I believe. Passing, receiving yardage, and rushing yardage. Garrett Wolf has nary a yard in the receiving game, but 196 on the ground. Marcus Perez, one yard deep in the end zone. And he'll be knocked down at the 13 yard line. 14 yard return. I tell you what, the Bobcats have just played great football today. Special teams, offense, defense. Frank Solich has got to be very happy with his performance, the performance from his players today. Take a look at the scoring drive for Ohio. Six plays, 67 yards, took 247. McCray bounces it to the left corner of the end zone on a 24-yard TD run. Horvath looking, looking, throws, incomplete, and a big, big hit from Todd Koenig. Now Todd needs to settle down because that's just a quarterback, unfortunately, laying out his receiver. Matt Simon, the intended receiver. For Phil Horvath just throws his ball behind Matt Simon. You know, it's okay to be excited about what you've done, but you, you basically what you've done is you've hit, you hit a guy, a defenseless guy, a defenseless guy. You know, you did a nice job. Get back in the huddle and act like you've been there before. Horvath looking, looking, throws nearly intercepted. I will say this: the last hit that. Koenig put on Matt Simon, I think, was still on Simon's mind right there. But Phil Horvath, who has been very accurate throughout the course of his career, just throwing it behind guys, above guys. Matt Simon was quick. I can't say I blame him, but quick to bring his arms down on that play. Third and 10 for the Huskies from the 14. Horvath looking, throws, Brent Davis has it, and it's a first down for Northern Illinois. They had to have it, and they got it. Again, a little high, but Brent Davis comes up with a big catch. Horvath looking, going down the field. Brent Davis, the intended receiver, and it was thrown a little high for him to be able to corral. 159 to go, 12 down. Well, they're a little out of their element right now. They're a run first, throw second football team with Garrett Wolf in the backfield and a group of inexperienced wide receivers. But it just has not been Phil Horvath's day. He's taken some crushing hits and, and really been inaccurate back there in the pocket. Horvath looks, throws, finds Brent Davis, and he grabs it. Down 12, you're going to need more than five yards a clip. Less than two minutes to play. Third and five at their own 32-yard line. Horvath looks, throws, got his man, and that's going to be a first down to stop the clock. Brandon Davis, junior out of Broadview, Illinois, with the catch. Good throw by Horvath. That's a well-thrown football right there. Horvath throws it in a perfect spot. Brandon Davis with a nice catch as well. 22 yards on the completion from Horvath to Brandon Davis. And only five or six seconds off the clock. Horvath with time throwing, and Brent Davis looked like he might have had it. They'll call it an incomplete. Boy, he had Garrett Wolf in the flat all by himself. Garrett Wolf doesn't even look like an option in the passing game right now. No, 
And it's something I talked about before the game kicked off, something Joe Novak coming into this season was really interested in getting Garrett Wolf more involved in the passing game. And today, nary a catch. What about a draw play here? No. They've, got, they've got one timeout left. You certainly want to use the clock. Horvath going down the field and is broken up. Flag flies. They may have one of the Bobcat defenders on a holding call. Matt Simon just running down the middle of the field. Wow. Marcus Harum gets called for the hold. Not sure there was a not sure there was an infraction. Defensive there. pass interference. Number 27 of the defense. 15 from the previous spot. First down. Mm. Big break for the Huskies. That's going to give them an automatic first down with 137 to go. Well, all of a sudden, they're at the 32 and a first and 10. With one timeout left. And the wind is, continues to kick up. Horvath throws. And that one's in the middle of the field. No, you can't do that. Jake Nordeen. You can't do that. Not as a senior quarterback. You know with a minute and a half left to go, down 12, you've got to work the sidelines. And that will be their final timeout. I think he's getting an earful right now. Really bad decision. John Bond is the offensive coordinator. I don't think he even really looked elsewhere. I think he looked right at Jake Nordeen and hits him in the middle of the field. And that, that may be a good decision midway through the second or third quarter, but with a minute and a half to go down 12, I'm not sure that's the right decision. They burn their final timeout. And I, I know Frank Solich would be willing to give them six, seven yards a clip down the center of the field from here on out. Really from top to bottom, we can't say it enough. The Bobcats just have come to they've to come count to play and, and they they played a great football game, and it happens. That's exactly right. They deserve the credit. They have played a whale of a football, no doubt. Second and three. Horvath, a lot of time He's throws, right has up. a man open, and it is dropped wow. in the end zone. Again, that's the second time we've seen a Husky wide receiver drop a sure touchdown. This one, Britt Davis just took his eye off it again, running all by himself at times, a little bit of a pick route. At times, this is the most difficult catch in football. He just took his eye off it. Wow, almost hung with it, but you cannot drop two short touchdowns and make the mistakes the Huskies have all afternoon and expect to win. Horvath looking, pressure throws, got his man, and he'll rumble out of bounds with another Husky first down. Clock at 117. Jake Nordine. Now, this is what you have to do in a two minute drill. He does a nice job getting the ball to Nordine on the outside. Jake does a fantastic job getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. You see him stretching for every yard he could get. Horvath steps up, throws, and nearly intercepted. Looking for Britt Davis. Threw that into double coverage. What, do you try to swing it to Garrett Wolf here? Yeah, they, that has just not been one of the options. Well, they see again, Horvath, you see him at the top of the screen. Right. Horvath steps up, and Tyler Russ almost comes up with the interception for the Bobcats, but you're right. It doesn't look like Garrett Wolf is even an option in the passing game. There have been several occasions when he's been left alone out on the edge, and Phil Horvath just hasn't looked to him. Horvath with pressure coming, throws, and gets rid of it. 
They've got their ears pinned back and they are just coming at the corner. And a great opportunity to maybe sneak Garrett Wolf out of the backfield and hit him quick the way that the Bobcat offense is done with McCray today. Todd Koenig was the man with the pressure on Phil Horvath. I mean, a screen pass would be a bad option as well if you think the Bobcats are coming out of you. Horvath to the end zone, tipped away. Boy, again, Garrett Wolf's just non-existent in the offense at this particular time. Fourth and 10 at the 14. This one just sails on Horvath, throws a post route. Again, if you're going to throw that route, you got to throw it on the back shoulder, throw it away from the defender. Garrett Wolf. Just not being utilized. Garrett Wolf, no touches on this entire drive. And here come the Bobcats again. Slip him out of the backfield and hit him. Horvath with a lot of heat coming, tosses it up. And it went through his arms again. And looks that like one looked like Britt Davis might have had a shot at it. And Ohio's going to take over and win the football game 35 to 23. Let's take a look at that last play. Yeah, it, it's it'd be a tough catch, but it's one that you got to make. You got to make. Threw it to the back corner of that end zone, that back box area. Yeah. And just couldn't come up with On it. On three occasions today. Horvath has had his moments where he struggled, but you've got to tip your cap that he threw three balls today that should all have resulted in touchdowns. That's correct. He has got to get better play out of his wide receivers. Ohio will take a knee, and that is going to do it. Huge win for Frank Solich in the Ohio Bobcats. To go on the road, their opening game of the MAC Conference play, and to come away with a victory against the team that was the preseason favorite to win the conference. Huge win for Ohio today. McCray, 204 total yards and three touchdowns. Wolf, 196, all rushing, two touchdowns. Again, a huge thanks to our crew today. Our spotter, Hollywood Todd Armour, and the best stat man in the business, Ethan Cooper. <laughs> We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. We'll wrap this puppy up. Tough loss for the Huskies. They drop at 35-23 right here at Comcast Sports.